Okay, this is video number two in the series of the Amazon Kindle Fire tablet versus the Apple iPad 2. Now, in the first video, we covered the specs of the devices and how they stacked up against each other. So if you haven't seen it, definitely go check it out. At the end of this video, I'll include a link to it. But in this video, we're actually going to fire up both devices at the same time, compare the boot up speeds on them, and basically just compare the devices feature for feature. So without any further ado, let's get started. I'm going to turn the Kindle on down here, and the power button's on the bottom, and the power button is on the top of the Apple iPad 2. So three, two, one. Get the splash screens, Kindle Fire, and the Apple logo. Apple iPad 2 was first up. And now we have the Kindle Fire. That stands to reason, generally, Android takes a little bit longer to boot up than does iOS when I've done these comparisons before. Now you'll notice the lock screens on both devices. Over here, you get a picture that is changing. It changes every time you turn the device on, or actually whenever you get to the lock screen, it's always different. And it's always book related, either book or media related. Right now we have ink pens, sometimes you'll get movie film, Sometimes you'll actually get uh, pencils, things of that nature. Re very artistic looking. Over here on the Apple iPad 2, you have your background wallpaper that you can change if you'd like. Both lock screens offer the time and the date. The Apple iPad 2 also offers a little bit more information, your Wi-Fi information, your battery charge, and tells you that it's locked here. But we're gonna unlock both devices at the same time, and it's gonna have to switch in opposite directions here. So let's see what we got here. And seems the Kindle Fire was a little bit quicker into the home screen. And the first thing that you're going to notice is the difference between the two user interfaces on the device. Now, even though the Kindle Fire is Android, it's an Android tablet, it's not traditional Android. So you don't have widgets on this device. The user interface shows you pretty much your multitasking right up here. These are all your recent programs that you've used on this device. And it's in a carousel here, similar to the cover flow on Apple devices. Then down here, you have what would be the equivalent of a dock, which is basically on a shelf here. The metaphor here, obviously, it's a Kindle. Kindles are known for book reading. They're e-reading devices. So you have shelves here on your background here. So you have a shelf of your multitasking, and then you have your shelf of apps here. Now these are apps that you use frequently. You can dock anything you want on these shelves here, and you have multiple shelves to do it on. On the Apple iPad, you have your dock down here, which also is customizable, and it's, it's a little more limited. You have less space here than you do on the Kindle Fire here. Now on the Kindle Fire's home screen, you have some areas that you can jump to from here. You have a search, which is at the top here, which is accomplished on an iPad. If you swipe to the right, you have your search here. But always on your home screen, you have it here on your Kindle Fire. Now something that you might know about Android devices, they usually have home screens, usually like five or seven home screens, and you can swipe to the side. That's not the case on this customized version of Android here that Amazon has used on the Kindle Fire. It's just basically an up and down, like I said, and it's a shelf metaphor. Now the things that you can actually jump to on this device is a newsstand, books, music, video, docs, apps, and web. So right here, it shows you that the main purpose of this device is to consume things. Newsstand, that's magazines and newspapers. Books, obviously the Kindle store, the biggest ebook store on the planet. Music, obviously that's something you might want to use on this device. Video, you can watch video on it. Then the later part of this menu here shows you productivity. Docs, apps, 
and then the web. So it shows you the focus of this device is consuming media and using Amazon products and features. Like I said, I look at it as a digital catalog. Over here on the Apple iPad 2, as you might be familiar with, your main home screen here is your dock and then apps, a grid of apps. Now this actually has its history in the first Palm devices. Palm had the first PDAs and pretty much the first smartphones out on the market and the user interface on those devices were a grid of apps. And the Apple iPhone was pretty much the first device that evolved from the Palm devices to take it the next step further. And that's pretty much in the iOS DNA where you have a grid of apps here. And then you have other apps here and that would continue if you have more apps on the device. The only thing that you do have is a search if you swipe to the right. Now generally on an Android device you hold down the home key if you want to multitask. If you're using a honeycomb device or upcoming ice cream sandwich Android device, there's actually a dedicated multitasking button. But on traditional Android devices you hold down the home key and it brings up your recently used programs. On this device here, like I said, it's on your carousel here. Now on the Apple iPad, you can change your background if you want. You cannot change it on the Amazon Kindle Fire. If you want to group things on an iPad 2, you can actually make stacks. So you can long press on one of your apps here, and you can move it wherever you want, or you could dismiss it if you want. There's a little X on there. And then you would just put it on top of another app, which is a similar app and you drop it down and then you can change the name of it to whatever you want. So this is a folder that you're creating. And there we go. Now I have an entertainment folder with two apps in it. Folders don't exist on the Kindle tablet, but you can group these apps close to each other if you'd like. Now multitasking is accomplished on the Apple iPad 2 by double pressing on the home key and then you have all of the apps that you've used recently and you can jump to them. You also have a media player if you scroll all the way to the far right. If you're playing any media on the Kindle Fire, you can actually access it from your notifications area up here by pressing on the icon up there. And I'll actually show you something right now. I'm gonna go into my music and let me just pick a song here. I'm gonna pick this song and I'm going to play it. I have it muted so you can actually hear it so I don't get into any copyright problems. But uh, the song is playing right now and I can go back to my home and do whatever I want. I could go into another app and I could go into Words with Friends or whatever and the music still will be playing in the background. The same is similar on an Apple iPad 2. But the way you actually access it if you want to get into it, like I said, you have your media controls here, you can do one of two things. You could go into the options menu on the top of the Kindle Fire and you have your options here and it shows you know, what you're playing and you, know, you can control the volume and also pause, play, fast forward, whatever. But also up here on the notifications up here, let me just show you that. It shows you Kindle and then one over there. And this is just a post-it I put on there to block out my name so I didn't have to edit it out in uh, post-editing. Saves me a lot of time. But that's a notification there. And I'm gonna press on it and you'll see there, that's my notification and I can actually jump into the song there and stop it, fast forward it, whatever I want to do. But if you want your media controls, you go up to the options here. If you want to control what you're doing with the song, you can go straight into the song on your notifications. Now, on an Apple iPad 2, what's new in iOS 5 is actually the drop-down notifications. And that was pretty much taken from Android. Android had it first, WebOS had it second, and now Apple has it third. So if you have any notifications, you just pull it down from the top. It's a little shade, and it's pretty much the same as an Apple iPhone 4S. And if you're interested in the Apple iPhone 4S, I actually have some videos on it on my channel, so you can check it out. Let's go back to the home screen here. Now, the HP Touchpad is really the only tablet out there that offers true multitasking. If you get an Android tablet or an iOS tablet, you have 
multitasking that pauses the program and then goes into another program. So since this is Android, you're not going to be able to play a YouTube video in the browser and then go and do something else like you would do on an HP touchpad or even on your laptop computer. And the same is true, obviously, on an Apple iPad 2. Whenever you go into a program and get out of it, it pauses it, and then you go into another program. So again, you're not going to be able to watch a YouTube video or listen to a YouTube video on your Apple iPad 2 and then go and do something else in another program. It's just not built that way. So pretty much the same on both devices as far as that goes, as far as multitasking is concerned. On the Apple iPad 2, you have iCloud. On the Amazon Kindle Fire, you have the Amazon Cloud Drive. Both services offer you five gigabytes of storage. Now some of the differences are on iCloud, you can use it to sync all of your iOS devices. So your computer, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever iOS device you might have, you can sync them all together with pictures and music and all of that. And if you want, you can actually use a streaming service from Apple where you can stream your music and pay, I think it's $24.99 a year. On Amazon, if you buy music or have any of your own music uploaded to the Amazon Cloud Drive, you can stream it for free. Now you're going to find that the Kindle Fire relies heavily on being a Wi-Fi device. Obviously you can download things directly to the device. It has 8 gigabytes of storage on it, but you can actually straddle using local storage and cloud storage. And a lot of the functions here, whether you go to music, you have the option to switch to the cloud storage and the actual device storage. So you might only have eight gigabytes locally on this device, but if you couple it with the cloud drive, you can get five gigabytes more, or you could actually buy more, or if you even actually buy just an album off of the Amazon Music Store, you get 20 gigabytes of storage. So there's ways to actually increase the storage of this device as long as you still have your Wi-Fi connection. Now Apple is well known as having a very large app catalog and there are over 100,000 apps specifically for the Apple iPad 2. The Amazon Kindle Fire uses Android apps. Obviously it's an Android tablet, a highly customized version of Android, but it's still an Android tablet and it can run Android apps from the Amazon App Store for Android. Now the Amazon App Store is not quite as large as the actual official Google Android market. I discovered that when I wanted to download some remote control apps on this device and I couldn't find them. But if you go to apps here, you'll see these are all the local apps and it would go on and on if I had more. Uh, but you can actually go to the App Store here and I don't know if you're familiar or not with the Amazon App Store for Android, but you can check it out online if you'd like. And you can actually try out some of the apps in your actual computer browser, which is a cool thing. But here you have your list of paid on the left and free on the right. And you have a whole host of apps here. So there's really no shortage of apps in this app catalog here, from games to productivity to entertainment, to lifestyle. Let's just scroll through it here. Uh, news and weather, utilities, social networking, all categories and then recommended for you. So there's a lot of options on both devices. You're probably gonna find more options on the Apple iPad too. But the best thing to do is if you're interested in either one of these devices is go to iTunes and check out what's available for apps on the iPad or you could go to Amazon.com and check out the apps that are available for the Amazon Kindle Fire and see if your favorite app is there. Now, as I showed you on the Apple iPad 2, if you want to do anything with your apps, you just long press on them and you can X them out to get rid of them or you can move them around on your device. Over here, let's go into the app catalog again here, and you have your shelf of apps here. If you wanted to, you just long press on one and it gives you the option to add it to your favorites, which is your dock on the device, or you can remove it from the device as well. So very similar in that you can get rid of the app if you want just by long pressing or move it to the dock, which is on your home screen here. It would move it to one of these areas here if you wanted to. And the same is true anywhere you find your app, you can long press it. And then in this case, it would be removing from the favorites because this is a favorites area or remove from the device. Same is true up here. 
add to favorites. Of course, that's a song, so that's actually not on the device. Let me show you here. Long press on this. Add to favorites or remove from device. Now, the Apple iPad 2 is known as a buttery smooth device. Swiping through is very painless and looks nice. On the Kindle Fire, very buttery smooth, very nice.